So recently, the head of EVO, Mr. Wizard, put out an interesting tweet. He asked via poll, what should be the final game on Championship Sunday of EVO? This is when everyone's in the arena. And Smash Ultimate has taken a huge lead over the other games, which isn't surprising because ever since EVO's been doing registration number updates, even though we don't see the exact numbers, Smash has been at the top, and slowly Tekken 7 has been climbing up and even surpassing Street Fighter V. So the reason this is interesting is because EVO is thought of as a Capcom-centric event, and for the last 10 years, a Street Fighter game has closed out EVO. It's also had things like the most amount of entrance, even though in previous years, this has been boosted by having things like free t-shirts at registration. Some people are even more cynical and say that Capcom just throws money at it. Is this a joke? And there's also been factors like Street Fighter being on ESPN or other channels in the past years. So let's put aside the number of entrants or cash determining the finals day order, because a really good top eight can wash away the bad taste of bad top eights or even lame announcements. And I know there's four games, but I don't think that Blaze Blue Cross Tag is gonna get that finals day spot. So the way I wanna try to determine which game should get the final spot should be the viewership analytics and the storylines hype going into the event. So the first thing we're looking at is viewership. And why are we looking at viewership? Well, it's because EVO is a business, and part of that business is selling ad space on the stream. So you definitely want your viewership going higher. You want more people watching and watching for longer and different people watching as much as possible and to have these numbers increase year over year so that you can ask for more money from sponsors. And some of these stats are really important to sponsors. First is unique viewers or all the different people that were watching the stream, max concurrent viewers, and hours watched. And we'll do a little bit of math and we'll calculate average view duration. That's basically the average amount of time someone would come in and watch the stream. So rather than look at viewership stats for past EVOs, we're gonna look at recent top eights for the three games, that's Street Fighter, Tekken, and Smash Ultimate. And Tekken and Street Fighter, this is pretty easy because we just look at the global premiere or master events. And for Smash Ultimate, they have this term called super majors. So we're gonna look at the three recent ones. So in order to streamline some things, some games broadcast on multiple platforms like Street Fighter, it's on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch, and also have multi-language streams, like there's a Japanese stream, Korean stream, a Chinese stream. So what we're gonna look at, especially since EVO is primarily broadcast on Twitch and in English, is we're gonna look at the top eights for the English streams for the major events. So since I don't have access to like the Capcom channel or the Tekken channel, I'm gonna have to use some third-party sites to pull Twitch viewership data from them. So I've used sites like Sully Gnome and I've compared them with other sites and the numbers are pretty similar. So even though I'm only looking at the main English feeds for these events on Twitch, there's another important factor on Twitch, which is the front page placement. So when you go to the Twitch homepage, there's a bunch of streams that automatically pop up. Now, if one of these events is in the first position, it gets a ton of views, less in the second and third and so on and so forth. So the reason why this is important is because the Tekken World Tour is a co-production between Namco Bandai or Bandai Namco and Twitch. So it might get preferential treatment sometimes, and we'll kind of see this when we take a look at the stats in a bit. So if you want to take a look at all the data I collected, including links and stuff like that, you can take a look at the link I'll put in the description. So first up is Street Fighter V, and this is the Capcom Pro Tour. And basically what I looked at was the recent global premiere events. And the recent events were CEO, Taipei Major, and Combo Breaker. Now Taipei Major had the lowest numbers overall, but it's pretty easy when you think about it. It wasn't in the best time zone for the Western audiences, and it also didn't have any Western players in the top eight. So what we really wanna look at is CEO versus Combo Breaker. So you can see CEO had more unique viewers, but Combo Breaker had more people watching concurrently and also watching for a longer time if you look at the average view duration. So why was this? So CEO unfortunately did not have too many Western players. There was only Dual Kevin and he got eliminated fairly early on. Combo Breaker, on the other hand, was on a holiday weekend. Memorial Day was the day after the event. It ran the whole top 16, which I think helps build a whole storyline. And also North American players made it deeper in the bracket with kind of the USA champ right now, Punk, making it all to the end and winning the event. So for Tekken, we have the master events from the Tekken World Tour and it's CEO, Fighting Games Poland, and Combo Breaker again. So Fighting Games Poland kind of falls into that Taipei Major category. So again, we're gonna look at CEO versus Combo Breaker. Now with CEO and Combo Breaker, you see almost the same story play out. CEO had this massive exposure, had almost double the amount of unique viewers 
but they were watching for less than Combo Breaker. And I think this is from the same factors. There was only one USA representative in the CEO top eight. He was fairly unknown compared to the more popular Tekken players. Whereas in Combo Breaker, Anakin is one of the most popular Tekken players. He made it really deep into the bracket. So it shows that North American players in the top eight drive higher viewership. Also, Combo Breaker benefited from running the top 24 also on Sunday. I always feel like when you show more of the bracket, especially towards the finals, it kind of builds anticipation and a storyline that keeps viewers hooked into watching the game. Now, I mentioned earlier that I didn't want to consider restreams when looking at these viewership statistics, but for Tekken, there is one restream that you just cannot ignore, and that's avoiding the puddle or Eris's restream. His viewership numbers are huge, but even more impressive is even though he doesn't get as many uniques for the restream because the main Tekken channel is probably getting the promotion, he gets these people watching for a really long time, almost 90 minutes. That's almost three times more than Street Fighter or Tekken's average view duration. So the important thing is, is that Eris's numbers when added to Tekken push it over Street Fighter's viewership numbers. And I think that's really important to consider because he is likely streaming to a mostly North American or Western audience. So the important thing is, is that I don't think Eris will be restreaming at EVO. I don't think EVO necessarily allows it or they haven't decided if they're gonna allow it yet. And most of the time, Eris does the top eight. So this is an important factor we need to consider later. So Smash is interesting because Nintendo just had their own world championship at E3 and it was a 3v3. They're also hosting these June online qualifiers to send someone to EVO. So we're gonna look at the Smash community events and basically what they call super majors. And the last three super majors were CEO, Smash and Splash, and Momocon. So the Smash stats were really interesting to look at. These three events were broadcast on three different channels of different size. I think CEO Gaming only broadcasts like once a year. And of these channels, it seems like Smash and Splash was the only one that got massive front page promotion. But despite that, they all got really impressive viewership. And even crazier was the average view duration for these channels was like three times or way higher than for Tekken or Street Fighter. So how does Smash get these super high max concurrent counts and super long average view time? despite not having an official tour or being on different channels? Well, I think it's because they have a really well-informed and motivated audience. If you look at the social media for the different players that are in top eights and also looking at the commentators and also looking at the different portals, they have super huge followings. Like the average Smash player has five times the following than a Tekken or Street Fighter player. So what conclusions can we come to with this data? Well, in order to get the most English speaking North American audience, you need North American players in the top eight. Tekken can get an edge by putting Eris on the top eight commentary. However, Street Fighter players, both commentators and players are more popular in social media and therefore have more reach. But even with all that, Smash Ultimate seems to be the clear winner. It has the highest max concurrent viewers, the highest unique viewers, and it retains its audience for a really long time. Plus it doesn't seem to need any specific combination of players or commentators. So Smash has a really dedicated fan base and also these players and commentators that have a huge social media reach. So if you're a sponsor or company that's paying for ad spots at Evo, you wanna be able to reach as many people possible, which Smash's unique show can happen. You also want people to stick around long enough to see your ad, which with the average watch time from Smash viewers, that's also a likelihood. But if Evo is focused on breaking that max viewer record, that max concurrent viewers, Having really strong numbers is only part of that equation. So ever since Smash games have joined the EVO roster, it's really helped bolster up the overall viewership, but it's never really claimed that max concurrent viewer spot. That's usually been done by a Street Fighter game. But last year, the Dragon Ball fighting game really surged those viewer counts and it hit 250K. So the reason why I feel Dragon Ball Fighters reached the super crazy high concurrent viewership count was because it was the culmination of this super long back and forth rivalry between Goichi and Sonic Fox. And the grand finals really delivered. There was the bracket reset, there were switching seats, it was kind of this whole USA versus Japan conflict, and it was just super exciting. It was trending worldwide on Twitter, there was all these memes about it. So that's why I think this, which is basically a storyline and hype, is also really important to consider when you're talking about final games at EVO. So what we're gonna take a look at in this section is the storylines and potential hype 
for the three different games, Street Fighter, Tekken, and Smash Ultimate. So the story for Street Fighter at EVO has been the same for the past 10 years. Can the US finally take an EVO title? Now pretty much directly correlated to this is Punk. In 2017, Punk suffered a really heartbreaking defeat in EVO Grand Finals to Tokido. And in 2018, he looked definitely shaken by it. But in 2019, he's come roaring back, taking three global premieres. I think the best situation for Street Fighter, it needs Punk in EVO's top eight. So having some other North American players would help. Ricky Ortiz, Knuckle Dude, Justin Wong, K Brad are good people to have in the top eight because they have pretty big followings. Also having the EVO champ Problem X return would be great as well. And there's also international or Asian players that have really good followings like Tokido, Daigo, Fudo, Bonchan, etc. So the problems facing the story of Street Fighter at EVO is a really lackluster reception to season four of Street Fighter V. There's only been one character released and we're not sure if any other characters are gonna get announced. Also, there's been really negative player feedback about the state of the game at this point. And there's this perception that there's diminishing viewers with Street Fighter events. Although I don't think this is necessarily true, it's basically they're spread across Facebook, YouTube, and all the restreams now. So Tekken 7 has a bit of the same storyline as Street Fighter V. A North American player really helps to have in the top eight as evidenced by Little Majin's amazing run last year. So some great players that have in the top eight would be Jimmy Tran and Anakin. They're the most popular players and they're kind of perceived as the best ones to take on Korea and Japan. Some other exciting players would be Joey Fury, P-Ling, Speed Kicks, and Super Akuma from Europe. Also, if he comes out of perceived retirement, Bronson Tran would be an amazing personality to have in that top eight. Now that's not to say that the Asian players aren't exciting. There's some players like JDCR that are really popular in Aroma and Lohai. But there's some also people from smaller regions like the Philippines AK and Dojin and Thailand's book that would be really crazy to watch. But there's one really big X factor that I think could really blow up the EVO top eight. So at EVO Japan, Arslan came from Pakistan. He had this really crazy dramatic journey just making it to his pools, got put in losers, and then took the whole event. And then he recently showed that it wasn't a fluke by also winning Tiger Uppercut. So I think he's the one that really needs to be in that top eight. I know visas are really hard from Pakistan to get into US, but hopefully he finds some way to make it because that would really make it an amazing top eight and an amazing tournament overall. So I wanna preface this Smash Ultimate storyline segment by saying that I am more familiar with Street Fighter and Tekken communities. However, there has been a lot of crazy stuff happening in Smash recently. One of the biggest ones is that Ali, one of the consistent top eight players, has decided to retire. Now, if he comes back for EVO, that'll definitely generate a lot of interest. So also recently, MKLeo has been on a tear, winning a variety of the super major tournaments. So if he continues on this dominant streak all the way to EVO, it's gonna create maybe this zero-like situation where you're just looking for someone to take him down. So speaking of Zero, I know he's kind of shifted into the content creator slash commentator role, but if he comes back to compete at EVO, he brings a massive audience with him, especially if he makes it to top eight. Also, there's a bunch of variety of up and coming players popping up. In fact, Zero has kind of discovered some of them like Bochi. And if one of those players make it, that really helps as well. Finally, having some international presence helps like Japanese players or maybe a European player or wherever they're from, that really helps give you this whole kind of world championship flavor. So when you're trying to determine which game has the best storyline potential for EVO, I think the first game you think about is Street Fighter. And maybe people are getting tired of the same USA versus the world story that's been happening for like the last 10 years in Street Fighter. Now, if you think about Smash, Smash seems like the perfect game, especially Smash Ultimate, because it's a new game, it's its first year. And it has so many different people that if they make top 80, it would be exciting. There could be upsets, newcomers, even the old guard that's there. The thing that really drags Smash down is that there's so much negativity and toxicity going on recently. And if certain players actually enter the tournament, it could really draw some pretty bad publicity that I don't think Evo would like. Now at face value, Tekken may seem to have the same problems as Street Fighter, where you need like a North American player in top eight, but I don't really think that's necessary. Tekken is such a global game and so many places in the world have their own strong communities. Like say for example, Arslan came, but then another player from Pakistan came and they made top eight, or someone from Southeast Asia like AKR Dojin made top eight. Like there's all these explosive elements, plus the commentators do such a good job of talking about these stories that it really has so many ways, like if you had like a powder keg 
that could be lit easily, it's Tekken and could really explode and be a really fun top eight. So with that being said, I would say my favorite would be Tekken 7 as having the best storyline potential for the final game of EVO. So then we gotta go back to the question, what should be the final game of EVO 2019? And I think if you take into account storyline potential and viewership stats, you have to go with Smash Ultimate, it's the clear cut winner. So if you think about EVO as starting in like its modern day evolution in 2009 with Street Fighter 4, then when you incorporated the Smash community, that really took EVO to crazy heights where now they're filling up stadiums at Mandalay Bay. And Smash Ultimate as a game, it's its first year again, it's a new game. It has this diverse community, it has a diverse amounts of characters winning tournaments. And basically, if you're that one person who you've never watched a fighting game tournament or you only watch one and it's EVO, Smash Ultimate's a great hook. There's lots of familiar characters that are known worldwide. And there's even the guest characters like Ryu and Snake and Cloud. And it just really makes a great final game. And I think based on looking at the evidence, that should be the final game for EVO 2019. So thank you so much for watching this video. I really enjoyed jumping into the stream stats and analytics. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed that. And what do you think should be the final game at EVO 2019? Now, in my own personal opinion, I think it should be Tekken 7 because Tekken has had this really crazy path from being an actual arcade game in EVO and having exciting finals all the way to this path where I think it's really like the leading game for the fighting game community. Season two was well received. And through the efforts of the Tekken World Tour, it's actually made more and more Tekken players join and try out the game. So that's just my own personal opinion. If you'd like to see some more videos, I have this great video here where I talk about how the FGC just really changed my life and got me to where I am. And as always, make sure to subscribe. Catch you later. Catch you at EVO.